In this video, I try to beat Terraria using wands only. With the many many changes to magic weapons, I've decided to revisit a challenge I've done in the past. How will these changes affect my progression towards the end game, and will I be able to defeat Moonlord? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, let's get started. I have a couple of options to get my first weapon. Number 1, and this is probably the easiest, which is finding the Wand of Sparking inside a chest near the surface, and then later on upgrading it to the Wand of Frosting. Number 2, I can try to find the Thunder Zapper inside sandstone chests in the underground desert. Or number 3, which is to break shadow orbs for a chance to get the Vile Thorn. For now, I'm putting off option 2 since it's a much harder weapon to obtain because of the monsters there, especially the Dune Splicers. If one spawns, then I'm basically screwed. I decided to go with option 3. The Valthorn is a really good weapon since it's able to go through walls and stunlocks enemies if it makes contact, so after mining for a bit and gathering bombs, I've made my way to the corruption and started breaking some shadow orbs. The first orb I broke had the musket, but that's obviously not a wand so I won't be using that. I was really hoping for the Valthorn to be in the second shadow orb, but unfortunately it wasn't. Instead I got the shadow orb light pet, but honestly I didn't mind. Not wanting to break the third orb because it'll cause the Eater of World to spawn, I teleported back home, made pumpkin armor, and then built a house to wait inside of until they arrived. When it was daytime, I figured I would go to the jungle and find some life crystals and accessories to be able to survive better. After returning back home, I crafted the platinum pickaxe to speed up mining. I then traveled all the way to the right side until I reached the ocean, but the wand of sparking was nowhere to be found. I decided to try my luck of getting the Valthorn again, even if it did mean summoning the Eater of Worlds. I broke two more Shadow Orbs and got another Shadow Orb Light Pet and the Band of Star Power. I actually didn't mind this since it'll be useful to me. The Band of Star Power increases my mana by 20 and gives better mana regeneration. The Eater of Worlds spawned, but without a weapon, I had no choice but to flee. I returned and broke a few more, but I still wasn't able to get one. I gave up and went on to explore the left side of the world. Inside a living tree, there it was. The Wand of Sparking. Finally, I got my hands on my first weapon. I kept going down the living tree and found a mushroom biome and the place was absolutely loaded with life crystals. It brought my health from 200 to 300 which was insane. I then got the message saying that the goblin army was arriving soon. With just the Wand of Sparking, I definitely wasn't ready for this. After getting crushed by a boulder and respawning, I fought the army with this weapon. It took quite some time, but after a long while, they were defeated. After defeating the goblin army, I crafted two pieces of platinum armor and then went back to the corruption to break one more shadow orb to finally receive the vile thorn. I thought about teleporting away, but now that I have this weapon, I tried my luck against the eater of worlds. I did a good chunk of damage and honestly I felt like I could beat it if I built an arena, so that's what I did. I built an arena and summoned it one last time. I basically just brute forced my way instead of focusing on dodging because I knew that I was able to kill the segments quick enough to pick up the dropped hearts from the boss. After defeating the Eater of Worlds, I crafted the Nightmare Pickaxe and some Shadow Armor, and then made my way to the Snowbound to collect some Ice Blocks. With the Ice Blocks, I combined them with torches to make Ice Torches. With 99 Ice Torches and the Wand of Sparking, I crafted the Wand of Frosting. This weapon is able to inflict the Frostburn debuff that deals 2 damage every quarter of a second rather than 1 damage from the Wand of Sparking. Having both of these weapons and 360 health, I figured it was now time to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. After defeating the boss, I got the message saying that a meteorite had landed, so I went searching for it. I checked the right side first, but it wasn't there, so I went to the left. When I was walking towards the living wood tree, I had a feeling it might have landed on top of it, so I checked it, and it did land there. I mined the meteorite, and then went back home to craft the full meteor armor. This armor set increased my magic damage by 27%, which is insane. 
Afterwards, I went underground and found the Goblin Tinkerer, but without any money in my inventory, I couldn't buy anything from him, so I went back home and began building some NPC houses. After getting the Goblin Tinkerer to move in, I purchased the Rocket Boots and Workshop from him. Now it's time to find some Sky Islands, so I drank a Gravitation Potion to explore the skies. I was able to find the Lucky Horseshoe and the Shiny Red Balloon. I then went through the jungle to try and find Hermes Boots. After finding them, I combined it with the Rocket Boots, Aglet, and Anklet of the Winds to make Lightning Boots. Now with these boots, I headed over to the dungeon to take on Skeletron. After defeating Skeletron, I made my way into the dungeon to find my next couple of weapons. The first chest I opened had the Cobalt Shield. I then found the Magic Missile, which shoots out a controllable projectile, and the chest next to it had the Shadow Key. A bit after, I was able to find the Aqua Scepter. This weapon shoots a stream of water which will be very useful for pushing away the Hungries when I fight the Wall of Flesh. Speaking of the Wall of Flesh, that's the last boss I'll be fighting before Hard Mode begins. So I mined down to hell and began building a bridge to fight the boss on. Along the way, I found some shadow chests. I found the Flower of Fire, however, I wasn't a huge fan of this weapon, so I ended up not using it. It basically shoots out bouncing fireballs. The weapon I was looking for was the Flame Lash, and it's a better version of the Magic Missile. It can set enemies on fire, and it allows two hits with the projectile before disappearing. After finishing the bridge, I threw the Voodoo Doll into the lava to begin the boss fight. After defeating the Wall of Flesh, I broke some Demon Altars to spawn in some Palladium, Mithril, and Titanium. After mining these ores, and after collecting enough Titanium, I crafted the full Titanium armor set. Alright, now it's time for a weapon more suited for hard mode. I went down to the Hollowed Biome to farm some Souls of Light and Pixie Dust. I combined these materials with some Meteorite Bars to create the Meteor Staff, and as you can tell what it does from the name, it rains the Meteors from the sky. There is a very crucial accessory for mages, and that's the nature's gift. It reduces mana cost by 6%, and combining this with a mana potion creates the mana flower. The mana flower will allow you to drink potions automatically without having to press the keybind every time you run out, so you can just focus on attacking. When night arrived, I summoned the destroyer as my first mechanical boss fight. The meteor staff is more suited for this boss since I can attack it from a safe distance without getting hit by the main body. And whenever the probes start coming out, the titanium armor set will take care of them. After defeating the destroyer, I went back down to the hollowed biome to farm some more souls of light since I was going to craft some wings. While I was down there, I found the wizard which was perfect. I purchased a ton of mana potions from him that restores 200 mana and the crystal ball that increases magic damage and also increases my max mana by 20. After collecting enough souls of light, I killed wyverns for souls of light to craft angel wings. I waited for night to arrive to then summon the twins.
After killing the twins, I summoned Skeletron Prime. With the souls from the mechanical bosses, I crafted the pickaxe axe. Before I tried to find the plantera bulb, I went and found a spider's nest to get my next weapon, the poison staff. It didn't really take too long before it dropped. It shoots out 3 to 4 projectiles that inflict the poison debuff. Before, the poison would cause enemies to lose 2 health per second, which isn't a lot. But with the update, they now take 6 damage per second. After obtaining this weapon, I went to the jungle to mine some chlorophytes. With the staff and chlorophyte, I combine them to make the venom staff. This weapon shoots out 4 to 7 projectiles that inflict the venom debuff. This debuff inflicts 30 damage per second, and the best part is that each projectile is able to be dealt onto enemies for a lot of damage. After locating the plantera bulb, I built an arena to fight the boss in. I added some life region objects like a campfire, heart lantern, some honey, and heart statues. When everything was set up, I broke the bulb to begin the fight. After defeating Plantera, I went into the temple to take on Golem. With the projectiles being able to go through enemies, I was able to hit all of Golem's body parts. After defeating Golem, I made my way back into the dungeon. There are now new monsters that spawn inside. This is where I obtained my next two weapons. The Shadow Beam Staff that shoots a laser that can bounce off walls and the Infernal Fork that shoots out a fireball that explodes with a lingering effect. This is also the place where I get materials for my last armor set before I take on Lumor, the Spectre Armor. This armor set has two different helmets. One that can spawn homing projectiles after you hit an enemy and the other that you can heal yourself with. The material I needed was ectoplasm. After collecting a good amount of it, I went back home and combined it with some chlorified bars to craft it. Afterwards, I went back to the dungeon for the last time to fight the lunatic cultist. After his defeat, I destroyed the Celestial Pillars, starting with the Vortex Pillar, Nebula, Solar, and then lastly the Stardust Pillar. And now it's finally time to take on Luna.
Alright, so that's going to be it for this video guys. My final thoughts on wands and mage classes in general? Well, I have to say they do feel a whole lot better to play, especially since mana regenerates much faster than before, so you don't really have to rely on mana potions anymore. And most wands were buffed, so that's also a plus. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.